Howdy campers and welcome to the ocean acidification experiment. Today we're going to be performing a experiment to see how the change in acidity in the ocean affects some of the animals that live in the ocean currently. Before we start on this experiment, let's first talk about what ocean acidification is. Ocean acidification is a changing of the ocean's pH. Now we rank the acidity in a scale of pH and chemistry, this is defined as the potential hydrogen in a, in, a, um, in a chemical. So we have our alkaline or basic at a level of zero and our acidic at a level of 14. And in the middle, we have a level of seven, which is neutral, which is like our drinking water. So we have our bitter tasting um, products and our acidic kind of like lime and lemon tasting products that are on each side of that pH scale. Bases <laughs> um, have a negative hydroxide ion, whereas acids have positive uh, hydrogen ions. So that is kind of how, as in their chemical composition, how we how we describe them in chemistry, how how we rank them based on their um, pH level. Now, how is the ocean becoming more acidic? Is um, as it has to do with carbon dioxide. So the ocean absorbs 30% of the world's carbon dioxide. Since the Industrial Revolution, this is when our factories are are being in play, a lot of the byproduct of these factories is actually carbon dioxide. There's a lot more carbon dioxide being produced by all these companies, um, all these, all these um, chemical reactions, and they're going into the atmosphere and they're being absorbed by the ocean. This means that there's a lot more carbon dioxide going into the ocean. And it has changed a 0.1, <laughs> it is, the ocean has changed by 0.1 um, change in their pH level. Um, before the Industrial Revolution, they were at 8.2. As their pH today, the pH is 8.1. Even this small little decrease can increase the acidity tenfold. That means the acidity of the ocean is 5% greater than it was pre-industrial time. But what does that affect? What does that have to do with anything? The animals that it affects most are those that produce a shell out of calcium carbonate. For example, I have this beautiful coral skeleton right here. Coral creates a base, a skeleton, um, out of a calcium carbonate mixture. It's a calcium carbonate base. On the outside of this car calcium carbonate base, they have their tissue and they have little polyps with, with tentacles and they're very, very cool. They also have a symbiotic relationship with algae that lives inside their tissue that helps them photosynthesize. And, and so they are very fragile. There's, there's two organisms living on a coral, and then they also have this calcium carbonate base. Corals are notorious for not being able to withstand uh, changes in temperature or the, the amount of light in an area. And acidity can cause a big change for these guys. Um, and it has reduced, has been the cause of the reduction of some of our coral reefs. So that's why researchers are paying attention to the coral reefs as a result of the changing acidity of the ocean. But it's not just corals that have an effect. It's all shell producing animals. I have right here two shells of oysters. Now oysters are part of phylum mollusca and phylum mollusca means all the shell producing uh, animals. So um, snails, uh, clams, even octopus create a calcium carbonate in internal um, uh, structures, uh, cuttlefish, um, at, at scallops, they all produce shells out of calcium carbonate. Now we're going to do an experiment to see what the changing acidity can have a result uh, can result in um, for these shell producing uh, animals. So I'm not going to tell you the answer because that's what science is, is creating an experiment and creating a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess. So I have here a jar of water. Remember we learned that water has a neutral um, pH and it is, um, it is at seven. I picked two shells that were very similar. Now, I have access to shells just on the beach here, but not everybody does. So you can also do this experiment with eggshells. They are also calcium carbonate based. What you can do is to take one shell and you can measure them beforehand. 
You can uh, take the weights before, or you can measure the length of the total shell and create an experiment. Whenever we make an experiment, we need to document everything. So we can weigh if we have a scale at home, or we can measure, or we can do both. We wanna document the beginning um, uh, information. We also wanna start with a hypothesis. Hypothesis are usually if-then statements. If Rena eats a cake, she will have a tummy ache. Then she will have a tummy ache. There's if-then statements in science. If the pH, uh, or if we add vinegar um, uh, to a, our experiment, then this will happen. So that is our guess, our educated guess, based on our experiment setup. So you're going to want one jar with fresh water and one jar filled with vinegar. You're going to document the time that you place each shell in the fresh water and when you place it into the vinegar. You wanna make sure that there's enough liquid to cover the entire shell. Now, I try to get shells of similar size. You might not have two shells of similar size or not want, um, or not have an egg the same size, um, but that's why we document and measure beforehand. So we denote which one we want for the fresh water and we label. You can write down, um, you can put it on a piece of paper and write down fresh water, lay it over a piece of paper and note um, acidic water or we're gonna use vinegar, so you can just put vinegar right there. We're going to note the time and we're gonna place our shells inside of the vinegar, and then we wait. Now, you will see the results of this experiment, but I, it depends on the, the, the um, it depends on the subject for your experiment, if it's an oyster shell or if it's an egg. An egg will go a lot faster for this experiment than a shell would. Now you can start to see that the shell is already starting to bubble here, but I'm not gonna show you my results because I want you guys to be able to make a hypothesis. But the important part is we have a control as our neutral pH at seven pH, and then we also have our vinegar, which is more acidic. I can't wait for you guys to see your results and to see if your hypothesis was correct. Enjoy your experiment campers.